The Senate hearing for Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson was held last week. And during that hearing, we watched Republicans make some pretty harsh accusations against her. But what if those accusations say more about the people making them than they do about Judge Jackson? I'll explain in a segment called How Did We Get Here? First, let's get one thing straight. Ketanji Brown Jackson is qualified to be on the Supreme Court. She went to Harvard Law School. She was a public defender and a Supreme Court clerk and a district judge and a court of appeals judge. And she played Ronette in her college production of the musical Little Shop of Horrors. And last I checked, that is exactly what the Constitution requires. But throughout the hearings, there's been one phrase that just keeps showing up. What do you say to people who say you're soft on crime? The allegation that Judge Jackson is soft on crime? We see that she has this tendency to be soft on crime. Is it even possible for a black woman to be soft on crime? The black women I know give the harshest possible sentences for crimes like hooting and hollering or running in and out that door. <laughs> Let's talk about where the idea of soft on crime came from and why it matters when it's used to tear down a black judge. To figure that out, let's go back to the 1960s. You know, when you could smoke on airplanes and also in the NICU. The 60s were an interesting time in Southern politics. Let's see if you notice something. Here's the electoral map of the Deep South in 1956. Here it is again in 1960. And now here's 1964. Now, normally, when something turns red that fast, it's because it got stung by a bee. So what happened? Well, in 1961, Republicans created something called the Southern Strategy. The Southern Strategy sounds like a plan to drive across Mississippi without getting pulled over. <laughs> if you're black, it's not gonna work. But in reality, the Southern strategy was a plan crafted by the Republican Party so that they could win the South by getting all the racists to vote for them, which is crazy. Obviously, they can't just put racists in charge of a party and say, we support Jim Crow now. Oh, wait, my bad. That's exactly what they did. In 1964, the Republican Party gave their presidential nomination to Barry Goldwater, a senator who publicly fought against the Civil Rights Act outlawing segregation. He also ruined the name Barry for the next 50 years. And then this guy made it cool again. <laughs> Yay! Republicans also begged Strom Thurmond to join their party. And bringing in Strom Thurmond to make your political party more racist is like bringing in live grizzly bears to make your dinner party more exciting. <laughs> the problem is that it works too well. So here's two facts about Strom Thurmond. One, he hated black people so much, he once gave a 24 hour long speech to stop them from getting civil rights. And two, he had a black daughter with his father's 16 year old maid and publicly denied her existence for over 70 years. Honestly, I'd rather hang out with the bears. Now, <laughs> Why are we rehashing all of this now? Well, it's because that so-called Southern strategy echoes to this day. During the 1964 campaign, Goldwater's vice presidential candidate, William E. Miller, gave a speech warning Americans about ruthless mobs. Those mobs were actually black protesters. And he used a new phrase to describe people who supported them, soft on crime. Even though the protesters were not criminals, this was the beginning of decades of Republicans using soft on crime as a euphemism for Democrats are gonna let violent Negroes come get you. You know, like how sorry I missed your text is a euphemism for I definitely saw your text but did not feel like answering it. <laughs> and since then, Republicans have used soft on crime as a euphemism for all kinds of racist stuff. Richard Nixon talked about a war on crime, while internal memos said that their campaign plan was to pit the races against each other. Ronald Reagan worked so hard to prove he wasn't soft on crime that by the time he left office, the prison population had doubled. And George H.W. Bush was so desperate to show America he hated crime that he did one of the weirdest things I have ever seen. This, this is crack cocaine seized a few days ago by drug enforcement agents in a park just across the street from the White House. It could easily have been heroin or PCP. It's as innocent looking as candy. Bitch, what candy are you eating? That looks like a bag of mozzarella cheese. I'm not sure what's worse, the fact that this man brought crack into the White House or the fact that that's not the craziest thing I've seen a US president do. That's his hand and that's his daughter. But 
here's the thing. The reason Republicans accuse their opponents of being soft on crime is because it works. It's a coded way for Republicans to tell voters, my opponent will not keep black people under control. In fact, the Southern strategy worked so well that it won Republicans the Deep South. And to this day, Democrats have never regained control. So all that brings us back to Judge Jackson. When Jackson is accused of being soft on crime, she gets all the implications that come with it. And to show just how ridiculous those accusations can be, here's Senator Com Tom Cotton asking the world's dumbest question. Do you think we should catch this is in and imprison more murderers or fewer murderers? I don't know, Tom. This seems like something you would figure out without the help of a future Supreme Court justice. Also, why do you look like an adult version of Doug? <laughs> but why did he really ask that question? It's because he wants to associate this black woman with crime. He's using her in the same way his predecessors have for the past 50 years. Judge Katanji Brown has been endorsed by the International Association of the Chiefs of Police, the Fraternal Order of Police, and 83 Democratic and Republican former attorneys general. Her brother and two of her uncles served as police officers. And fun fact, the Supreme Court has absolutely nothing to do with punishing criminal behavior. So sure, call her soft on crime, but we know about the Southern strategy and we know what you're really saying. It's just like a text message that says, sorry, I missed your text. We're not fooled. This has been How Did We Get Here?